Now, um, I am joined today by our wonderful friends from Yoso. Um, uh, thank you so much for agreeing to do this, Amelia. Mm -hmm. you've, uh, you've joined us on several occasions throughout the years when we started the Taste Your Future campaign and also for food grads. Um, mm -hmm. Always looking for inspiring people that are just starting out in their career. Um, and, you know, you've, you've never let us down in terms of, you know, speaking to your own experience, your career journey. And here you are today with Yoso. So um, thank you again for joining us. And I can pretty much hand things over to uh, Francis to introduce yourself, if you wouldn't mind, and, and uh, Yoso to our viewers. And um, maybe tell us your, your own career story, how you started and, and about the company. And I'll try not to butt in because I always have lots of questions. So I'm going to try to stay quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfectly fine. And uh, thank you so much for having me today and also the, uh, with Amelia's um, wonderful participation uh, on behalf of everyone at Yoso. Um, I'm Francis. I'm the uh, co-founder of Yoso, and uh, we are a family-owned business, uh, proudly to say a plant-based pioneer, uh, especially comes to uh, yogurt type and probiotic spread type products. Uh, this is my 20th year with the company uh, when we started. And uh, I can basically uh, tell you a little bit about my own story. Um, came from Hong Kong in late 80s, uh, got my education, and I decided to attend University of Guelph as uh, my post-secondary um, education uh, in agricultural uh, economics. Uh, and I went for an MBA in every business uh, after that. And um, it was really the last year of the on campus that I came across uh, the Project Sawyer, which is a new product development project sponsored by um, uh, food grade soybean uh, seed supplier, um, which really want to encourage new innovation on things that can be made out of soybeans. Um, I'm very fortunate both my brother and myself, we came from a heritage of um, manufacturing and commercializing soy milk uh, based in Hong Kong um, since 1940. So there is a, there's a bit of heritage and family background that I, uh, that I came, came with that when I saw that notice, I thought, you know, let's give myself a taste of what an entrepreneur would, would be like and uh, enter that competition and um, track my brother, who is a food scientist, um, uh, to come up with um, a soy spreadable concept uh, for a, a, as an idea, as a concept to compete in the contest. We didn't win the contest, uh, but we end up working on it and persisting, uh, trying to perfect the formulation, the recipe at our home kitchen. And that really became the first uh, product that we have introduced uh, after working a year and a half in our home kitchen, and we launched that in uh, 2002. And uh, I noticed there are some other questions that I should address as part of the introduction, and this is actually uh, my first business and also my first job. Um, so definitely learning by doing is very much <laughs> my everyday experience. It's a little bit less right now after 20 years, but still very much of the mindset because uh, a lot of things you don't venture out you just don't know and uh, and obviously with some accumulated experiences and uh, and now I'm um, overseeing mostly responsible in sales and also in new business development so I'm more of uh, I'm on everybody else also a bit of ambassador when it comes to consumer and customer outreach and uh, talking with presenting new products with our customers and um, and be a good spokesperson as a co-founder of the business and uh, yeah very happy to be here today and I, I think that's that's basically my story that's amazing do you um you know the the um the drive to start a business you mentioned entrepreneurship um it's very humbling, I would imagine. I know that I dabbled when I started Food Grads uh, five, six years ago now. And um, it, I found that you 
become humbled very quickly about what you don't know. <laughs> Would you say that's, uh, you know, you know, you kind of feel confident in the pieces that you do know, that, but when you run your own business, the pieces that you aren't so familiar with and not so good at, I think is the, probably the best way of putting it, um, really come to light. Most definitely. And, um, and you are right. And I think feeling humble, it's, it's pro I, I, I would say is the right mindset because you, you realize um, there is always the opportunity should always be um, what else we need to learn to advance um, in order to, uh, to keep moving forward. And I, and I think that's the drive. And the, the drive sometimes gets a bit dry and it becomes a bit of determination and you have the determination and you feel back the a little bit on the passion and i think that's uh, that's a, a journey of what an entrepreneur um i i think most of us um deal with it every day and um yeah so it's, it's definitely um uh, every day it's 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 a good it's a good challenge mm -hmm. and you're doing it with your brother which is you know i think helps having a partner you know, when if if things are getting very stressful or busy or challenging, um, you know, there's two of you that you can share that burden a little bit, I guess. Yes, it, it is. It's definitely um, it's definitely a great asset to have when it comes to um, um, sharing and and leveraging um, upon each other with our different skill set, and so so we can focus and do what we believe uh, we can contribute the most to the company. And uh, for, for example, like right now, I, I'm sure we have perhaps some little glitch in the production floor, but I, I, I just have utmost trust in him that <laughs> he, he will be able to deal with it. Then, then I, 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 I can have this wonderful conversation you know, with everybody. That's the um, beauty of the food industry. There's never a dull moment, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> And you had said he's a food scientist and um, he may or may not join us today. Um, that's fine. You know, you, you had mentioned there's um, something to, to tend to. Um, he's got the food science background and your economics, you mentioned? Yes. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So it's good to even out that skill set and bring the different skill sets together. Yes, it is. And believe it or not, even um, we have different skill set that we, there are still some missing parts that's there's still missing parts as well, and um, and that's why we have a great team uh, here, you know, with Amelia and and also, you know, wonderful group of individuals who uh, who dedicate themselves every day and and um, focus in what uh, we all believe we do best, and, um, and 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 I think especially for a small to medium sized business, it, it's you know I think the trust. And the teamwork, um, it, it gets a bit cliche because these are the things we we talk about all the time. But um, they 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 do work and they are important, you know. Because um, you know um, we need that mutual support to to keep ourselves going every day. Mm -hmm. well, that's a great segue into introducing Amelia. Um, Again, I can't thank you enough over the years. You have really supported our mission <laughs> to uh, you never say no, which is amazing. And, and you know, you, you wrote um, an, a really, when, I think it was back when you were at Niagara College, I thought I'd yeah. let you talk a bit about that. Um, but you wrote this blog and it really did the rounds. Like a lot of people <laughs> could really see themselves in your story and, and got support from that. So um, it's called From from Career to, uh, From Concept to Career. And um, we can definitely share that link um, afterwards. But uh, it was a great blog and you've since done the podcast last year. So I yeah. can't thank you enough. So introducing Amelia again, <laughs> go ahead. Hello, hi. I, well, I'm just so happy to be part of Food Grads and uh, Taste Your Future again, you know. I think what you guys are doing is so important. And I know when I was a student, resources like this was were so important to me. So I'm just happy to contribute anyway into that. But yeah, so I'm Amelia. I'm the R&D food scientist here at Yoso. Um, 
I have a background. I, well, I met you at Niagara College. I first went there to do culinary management. And then I uh, merged into the food technology program. Um, and I graduated in 2017. Um, I currently am doing my master's in food safety and quality assurance at Guelph as I'm working here at Yoso. So at Yoso, my role as R&D food scientist um, mainly consists of ideation and development of new products. And I also help uh, Eric sometimes in the plant production, um, figuring out uh, troubleshooting and continuous improvement in the plant, as well as um, different departments like marketing and quality assurance. Since we are a small team here, we like to help each other out wherever we can. That's amazing. And so tell us a little bit about your experience at Niagara. So when I met you, you I know you were doing some risk, risk optimization courses and food safety courses. Um, did you always know you were going to get into the food industry and that was something that you, you wanted to pursue? Well, actually, so my first job was at a bakery in Sarnia, where I'm from, and I fell in love with baking. It was around the time that Cake Boss was really big and I, I wanted to do that. So that's why I went to Niagara College for culinary management. Um, however, once I got to my cost control class, I realized that like, logistically it's rather difficult to have a successful business and also the sort of lifestyle I was hoping to have. So uh, a friend introduced me to food science and I thought, you know what, I love food. I'm very passionate about food, but I also have always been very interested in science. So I was able to transfer into that program, which is where I met you. And um, yeah, while I was at Niagara, I also had opportunities to study risk optimization and auditing um, from Victor, which um, actually was a course that they ran on spring break. And they thought, sure, we'll offer it to you. No problem. No one's going to sign up. And my whole class signed up actually to spend their spring break doing risk optimization. So that, that was a dedicated bunch of students. So. Yeah, I'm really proud of yeah. that. I'm really proud to be part of that group. Well, and I think it, you know, it was definitely great training. I mean, look where you sit today. Um, how would you say that training supported you to, to be in the role you're in? Yeah, risk optimization was uh, very helpful in having this understanding of quality assurance and the importance of it. Um, it was, I would say, a very practical um, approach because Previously, other courses we were learning more about like the theory of quality control and uh, has been things. But when Victor was teaching the course, he was able to say, OK, well, here's why it's important. Here's how you would use it in your everyday life. And some of those um, like pillars that we learned about food safety, I'm able to carry into my jobs in the food industry, because first and foremost, for anything, we need to make sure the products that we're making are safe for consumers. Yeah, you're you seem to be an eternal learner. Like if I recall, did yeah. you also do a you mentioned you're doing your master's currently at Guelph and you spent some time at George Brown. Is that right? I did. Yeah. When I, I used to work for Dare Foods and I got to uh, work in the uh, shipping and receiving department and that sort of sparked an interest in supply chain management. So I did a supply chain management program at George Brown College as well. So you mentioned Dare. So can you tell us a little bit about your career progression? like? After Niagara, you what? Where was your first job? Was that there? I uh, actually after Niagara College, I worked in Disney World for one year. So oh, yeah. yeah, so I moved to Orlando. I was a, a cultural representative for the Canada Pavilion in Epcot. Uh, so I worked with a hundred other Canadians at the time, and um, uh, Mickey was my boss, and that was fun. And then I came back, and then um, I worked at Dear Foods uh, in Cambridge, and we helped. Um, commission and open a new cookie plant. Um, and this was like a state of the art technology plant. It was really interesting to see. They had uh, laser guided vehicles and they had robots that usually were used in the pharmaceutical industry, but they were being used to package the cookies. So that was a really eye opening experience um, from a technological standpoint of all the automation and equipment that you need for food processing. And then from there, I came. Uh, to Yoso. So I've been with Yoso for two and a half years now. And in the two and a half years, as a team, we've been able to launch 18 products. So we're really expanding from the yogurt category into other uh, plant-based foods. 
So Francis, maybe this is an opportunity to bring you back into the conversation around your product line um, and really sort of, I think, educating people on dairy alternatives as well. I, I, you know, there are so many um, new products in the market. Innovation, um, you know, is huge technology. Um, people want to learn about the how they can support um, environmental issues, sustainability. And I think when you're just starting out as a student or a new grad, you don't really, you don't know what you don't know. Maybe you can elaborate on how you feel as a company, you address some of those, those issues with, the, with, with your product lines. I think that's a very, uh, I think it's a very valid question and, and definitely a, a timeless question because I think if you ask that question in different time, um, the answer would always be different because it is an evolution and um, and you know we live in a we live in a liberal, liberal part of this planet, and obviously a lot of trends and products are very consumer driven. Um, and so when we first started, it's it's quite obvious that uh, most of our products are geared towards uh, families with uh, food allergies, and also. Um, as well as you know, uh, vegans and vegetarians. And full disclosure, I'm not um, a vegan, um, but I'm also, because my background is an Asian, I'm also probably a bit of a flexitarian by default. Um, and it was actually very hard initially to launch this business or as the face of our brand because I'm not a vegan. Um, it was that exclusive um, back in 2002 um, because if you are not, uh, you don't, you you are not a vegan. Everyone would question like why you you know you are launching a product or you are launching a brand. Um, so it has come a long way, and and obviously as a manufacturer and products we have we have launched since then, you can see the evolution has changed from you know more on the vegans and and food allergies now is really becoming more of. Um, every day or more of a flexitarian um, I think that's the right term for everyone just want to eat more in a, in a moderate manner and people are a little bit less judgmental on um, whether this has to be um, a full ingredient one ingredient based for example soy was the ingredient and then it was the almond and uh, and then there was the coconut, and I think now you see a lot more products are very experienced and sensory driven, and I think that's that's a sign of you know plant based foods are really gaining popularity. Uh, you know, are people really looking for the same experience? Um, but you know, also knowing plant based are just healthy and better for the environment. But I'm not fussy about you know, um, certain ingredients in it or not in it. And you, you can see products on the shelf right now uh, reflecting that. And, uh, and brands that are holding a gold standard are um, actually enhancing what they offer too. So I, I think it is a very healthy competition that is really um, making the whole plant-based category very exciting right now. Mm -hmm. Amelia, do you have anything to add there? Uh, well, I think it's, as an industry, it's been really fascinating to see the plant-based movement. I'm glad that we're able to support it. Um, Francis and Eric really have been pioneers when you think about in the early 2000s, what was available for dairy alternatives. It was very limited. And now that they've been able to stay in the game for so long and then branch out, it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, really cool to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and I, I mean, one of the things, obviously, I sit from an HR perspective, so um, always around attracting people into the industry, and and you know, we we are our industry is up against so much competition for um, em, you know employees right now. I think it's a it's a problem across the across the globe, but certainly um, the food industry, all, almost before the pandemic struggle to bring people in it's not seen as the most the sexy industry when you compare it to other industries and i think that we really have an opportunity with um you know food innovation and with 
new technology, robots, you know, these these are cool things that if the industry um, could promote it, could we could really attract the next generation into a lot of these roles. What would you say, um, either one of you, you know, that, that wants to ask this, what's, what's the most surprising thing you think um, a new grad or someone that's not sure about the food industry might might not know about working in, in, this, in the industry? Amelia, you want to go first? Um, what surprised me, I mean, even just like on a basic level, how things are made on such a large scale. So fascinating to me. Process engineering. Um, for students, I would recommend, you know, going to the store, finding, you know, thinking about your favorite product or finding a new product and then really thinking, okay, how do they make this? And then how do they make thousands and thousands to distribute nationally? Um, yeah, so I think how it's made is what's shocking to me. Francis, what would you say, you know, would you think that they'd be surprised if they were a fly on the wall and could see inside, you know, the, the plant? Um, well, I, 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 I th I'm going to perhaps because I'm so dated. Um, so <laughs> so I, I'm probably taking a more on the, um, I, I guess, on more of a, a mindset perspective is uh, I think any, a, any driven um, passionate graduate from, uh, you know, fresh from college, um, you know, when you're landing on the job, especially in the food industry, you know, and I, I totally uh, echo Amelia is, yeah, I, I, even if the smallest thing, um, the scale of making it, the amount of effort requires to do it consistently and consistently good in terms of quality takes a lot of hard work. I mean, even, you know, from places and vendors you see from a farmer's market, you know, versus, you know, like our products that carry over, you know, 1200 stores across Canada. Um, it's, it's, it, it is a lot of dedication and um, hard work that goes behind it. And, um, and, and I think that's, I think, I think perhaps most grads, may find it surprising that the amount of work and possibly things that might go wrong every day um, in order to maintain that standard, it requires a lot of concentration and, and, uh, and focus. And uh, the environment is the same. The equipment layout perhaps is the same on the floor or you know at, at, at a facility, uh, but every day is really um, a new day, and I think I, I can I can see for most grads they they may not you know rightfully they may not appreciate and see this from day one. One of the one of the questions we get a lot from students and grads is you know should I join a large company should I join a small company what are the benefits of the the pluses and minuses of both. I, uh, I wonder if you have an opinion. I know, um, Francis, you said this has really been your only job, so you haven't had the experience, perhaps, of no. working for a larger company, but maybe you could point out what you see as some of the benefits of a, a small company. Well, I'm glad you asked me that, because if you ask me, like, what is working for a big company or a small company, then I, I'm naturally biased, and I would, I would say a small company. Um, I would say... You know, uh, listen, like, I, I don't think any company or brand is perfect. You know, there's always room for improvement and things we can do better. But one area that I'm very proud to say is we, we are very, we are very driven by transparency and about uh, making sure everyone know, you know, where we stand and where we're going. Um, and... Um, you know, we can certainly have more town hall meetings and whatnot. But I, uh, you know, I, I think that's the advantage we have being a small company is to be able to communicate that. And, you know, Amelia is a great example, like, you know, uh, on special new product development, process development, um, challenges, opportunities, continuous improvement. She's probably, I would even say, um, more informed and attuned than I am uh, because 
you know our different functionalities in the company and and I and it's something I actually very proud of um, because um, I'm able to um, have a great team to make this happen and um, so we, we embrace everyone newcomer uh, old timer with open arms to say you know you're part of the team you know we're trying to do a best in what we can do making delivering best tasting quality products and um, yeah and it's it's a it's a very simple um, mindset and common goal that we share in here and um, so I, I think that's the advantage that we have as long as you you want to make a good effort and focus um, we, we embrace it you know 100% and there's no I, I think there's probably a little bit less politics as well when it comes to work environment which I think big companies tend to have a little bit more of that. I would agree. Amelia, what's your, your take on your experience, based on your experience? Um, I would say honestly, like my experiences in a huge corporation versus small have been very different, both good advantages and disadvantages in both. Um, I, I, when I worked for a big corporation, it was really interesting seeing just such a mass scale of everything being produced. I definitely learned a lot from a process engineering standpoint. I also had the opportunity to work um, like as a technician on the floor. So actually producing like be it on the production team, which side note, I will say, I remember having a class with Dr. Amy at Niagara College and she said to us, you guys need to go be operators before you are research and development or quality or whatever you want to be. It will be the best thing you'll ever do. And we left class and my classmate said, I'm not going to school for three years to, so I can be an operator. I want to do something else. I want to, like, I want to do other departments. And myself having done operator experience, it, I learned so much from a continuous improvement standpoint that things I learned there, like I take into my everyday work across no matter what I'm doing. So mm -hmm. I recommend that for sure. Um, starting you know at the bottom and then working your way up um from a large corporation yeah it's definitely a different environment very um structured environment whereas when i came here to a, a small family company it's nice because there are so few of us there's lots of opportunities for cross training so i personally get to do research and development but i also get to work with procurement and operations and uh, marketing and things like that where in larger companies, I wouldn't necessarily have that opportunity. That's very true. I always say, you know, the, the cross departmental thing, um, you're kind of like in a larger organization, it's, it's just not possible. Whereas in a smaller, you get to learn more. And especially if you're just starting out, you don't know what you don't know, how it all works um, and how how the company works, how, how your job affects other people within the organization and that sort of thing. We did a, a, a webinar recently on onboarding, and um, I think that's one of the, um, the, the most crucial parts when you do bring on somebody, especially a new grad that's new to the industry, is if, if you introduce them to different people in the company, they get to see how their job impacts. And they also get to say to themselves, well, I'm doing this, but I really like what they're doing. That's really interesting me. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that's... Um, that's critical, being able to have that opportunity. I definitely think you get that more within a smaller company than, than larger. Um, so it's interesting that you got that advice from Amy too, because she's a very smart woman at, at Niagara mm -hmm. College. And it's mm -hmm. true, I think um, there's nothing wrong with starting at those sort of grassroots level and, 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 and working your way up. And in terms of a culture at Yosa, would you say that, that you have a bias towards that in terms of bringing somebody in, if, if what would they need to show you in order to work their way up? Let's say they do come in, perhaps they don't have the education um, under their belt, like like Amelia, but they, they are willing, they're hardworking. What does the path look like potentially with you? So Francis, maybe you want to go first on that. I can hear you, I think. <laughs> Is, sorry, is that my question? Yes, if you, okay, uh, I'm if sorry. you don't mind, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you, um, do you mind do, do, uh, to ask me again? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, no, I mean, um, 
we get a lot of people that don't have the education like Amelia that w walks in the door and, and has that education. Um, but maybe they're willing, maybe they want to learn, um, they have an interest in working in the industry. What's a pathway for somebody like that at your soul? Do, do you welcome individuals like that? We do. And I would say um, it's, there's always a bit of luck and circumstance. And, um, you know, I'm, uh, I think both Eric and I are, are very old fashioned in, in many ways. And, you know, we love hearing stories like, um, back in the days when people uh, just, you know, arrived from, you know, um, another country and they can walk into a place and find a job. And if you win the work hard, you would, you would secure an op uh, employment. Um, I, I think when we were a um, few years ago, I think we still very much into that. Say, you know what, like um, we have walk-ins and submitting resumes and you know we would look at it, and um, yeah, and we 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 want to nurture that. But truth to be told, I think we have seen a lot fewer of that for the past. I would even say probably the past six seven years, um, if not five years, of people just um, new individuals or uh, fresh faces come in and looking for opportunities. I we have seen a lot fewer uh, for the past for a long time and um i think that also speaks of why you know i'd love to be a part of you know this uh interview or this session today is really to add a voice and to advocate you know food manufacturing is a very you know it's it's fun and also um it, it's a pillar um, of what we need you know in in our society because you know uh, food production sustainable food production um, it's, it's very critical and, um, and it's something that, you know, you can build a career upon, um, if you are willing to give that chance. Mm -hmm. Lots of opportunity and, you know, arguably you don't have to stay in the same position. Um, mm -hmm. you know, you could come in as an operator, you can come in as a, you know, well, Amelia, you started really on the, uh, on the QA side, um, wouldn't you say, and then moved sort of on to, into the product development um, side of things and where, where would you say your career could go like not to say you're ever going to leave your soul or you, you know <laughs> but where could it go if someone says oh I'm going to school I'm going to do um, I'm going to follow in Amelia's footsteps and the, the culinary piece and then QA um, what could you do with your, your background in education there I mean what's exciting with that question is that what you do with it really is limitless um, I mean, quality assurance, research and development, uh, operations like plant management, I would be like the immediate ones that come to mind, but then also, you know, maybe you come up with a great idea and you're passionate about it and you want to become a food founder like Francis and Eric, or, you know, you want to, you find, you just want to contribute that way. I'm, it's hard to, like, it's hard really to describe everything you could do because I feel, you know, like with the right attitude and um, education behind you, like really it's whatever you'd like to do, like you could achieve if you mm -hmm. work hard enough. That's true. Do you have a mentor? Do you, I know mentorship is huge. Um, and I wondered if you actually had, uh, you know, people in your life that you would consider mentors. Yeah, I think um, my parents for sure are mentors. Um, my partner is also very supportive. I think in the industry, again, like Dr. Amy is someone, I think I've talked about her on every single time I've been with you on food grads, but she is someone that she like, that, like that is a person that I aspire to be like. Um, and then, you know, it's interesting, like as we work with other companies and I meet other founders, there are a lot of people that I meet that are leaders in smaller companies that I say, oh, wow, like I, you know, how you, are conducting yourself and you're so young and you're made this new business like is really aspiring mm -hmm. um you know there are people on linkedin that i really like like for example margaret coons the founder of nuts for cheese is i think she's my age and like her product is in thousands and thousands of stores it's amazing um yeah there's 
honestly, I could go on forever. There's lots of people to look up to here. So it's, it's yeah. uh, very inspiring. Networking is huge. You mentioned LinkedIn. Yeah. I think that's key for any new uh, student or, um, you know, students should start their, their LinkedIn profile, but certainly um, when they have graduated and looking for work. So that's a nice segue into where would you give, what advice would you give students and grads and job seekers that are looking for jobs in the industry? Um, for example, maybe Francis, you can speak to how you hire, like what's your process? Where do you advertise, and, and, you know, where can someone find a job that's, that's uh, currently open with your organization? Well, we currently used um, uh, uh, pretty much all the uh, convention um, platforms, um, indeed, uh, LinkedIn, and uh, and what word of mouth, believe it or not, actually um, still play a very big role because they, it comes in um, some a level of uh, credibility when it, you know Ben is referred by, especially by someone. Uh, an existing employer, whatnot, that we work with, and um, because trust and dependability, I think that's the foundation of any relationship, uh, including you know a workplace. So um, we do. Um, that's what we do, and um, but attitude is is a very big thing too, and um, and I want to kind of fill in actually what um, Amelia was talking about you know when what what i i would say actually to prepare a career uh, especially in the food industry is to uh, find a passion and um i think that's very important because it's got to be a personal element that drives a person to to make something happen and i think uh once you do and you would you would um one way or the other connect with like-minded people and opportunities would sort of follow you. But I think it's something that you have to induce yourself or um, initiate yourself like from yourself first, because otherwise it's, I, I think, I think opportunities are, are harder to happen and uh, sort of a mysterious thing, but I, I, you know, I've seen that and I, I'm a big believer on, you know, on, on that aspect as well. Um, yeah. Hmm. Finding what you love. I mean, the thing is, a job's a job. There's, it's never every day going to be amazing, you know. Um, there's always yeah. going to be elements you don't like. But I think you're right. Like, finding something that you're passionate about, that, that, you know, some purpose around, which there are so many opportunities like that in the food industry, especially with a, a company like yours. So where, you know, you are addressing a, a, a societal issue, you know, a, Mm -hmm. an issue in, in you know that um and it is close to many people's hearts you know whether somebody has allergies or whether it's a more of an environmental perspective um there's good work to be done and i think that's one of the ways we do try and inspire young people to explore careers in this sector um for sure uh, amelia how did you find your jobs in the past like your your different movements throughout your career what was your sort of go-to uh, LinkedIn is a huge tool. I use link, um, like LinkedIn can be used for job hunting. A lot of it actually, um, as Francis said, a lot of it is through people that you know. What's funny is that um, your classmates now, in five years, you probably will be working with them in some capacity or you'll be in the same sort of realm because, you know, especially in this area, food industry is quite small. So that's exciting. I mean, I would say like get all your classmates LinkedIn, um, connect with everyone. As a student, some advice I got is that on your LinkedIn profile, go look up your favorite food company, find who the people are that run it and connect with them. Don't just follow, connect. And, mo and then if they accept, go one step further and message them and say, hey, you know, like I'm a student right now, but one day I want to have a job like you. How did you get to do that? And most of the time, these people will take the time to reply back to you and maybe give advice that might help you. Um, so that is a huge tool. LinkedIn is a huge asset, yeah. Yeah, oh, I couldn't agree more. And I think that this industry, 
it's full of nurturers and people that inherently want to feed the world, want to feed people. And it's full of really good people. And, you know, I think that's a missed opportunity. People are always shy. I mean, if it's constant, you don't, you want to respect people's time and um, people are busy at work and they're not always on LinkedIn. So, you know, it's not like you can send a million messages and expect yeah. uh, you know, a, a ton. But I think by and large, to your point, if you, if you reach out and you ask a question, um, most people are always happy to to help and to to give guidance and you know pay it forward so to speak. Um, you know, they, and, and I'm glad you mentioned at the beginning. You know, having a resource like Food Grads, uh, Taste Your Future program, and now the Careers Now program. Um, you know, our role is really to promote the career paths and the opportunities in the industry, but also um, provide some training and, and mentorship and that kind of thing. That leads me on to um, the next question I have around um, soft skills. Maybe maybe you can mention two to three um, soft skills that you think someone needs in order to enter into, um, I guess it depends on the job, but really maybe the company, maybe Francis, you could talk to the culture of the company um, and soft skills that they might need. And then maybe Amelia will ask you more pertaining to QA or, uh, or R&D roles. Um, but yeah, Francis, like, what would you say were the, the number, the three top soft skills that people should really need to, to hone in order to have a chance of, of working with you? I, I'm going to give a, a very, I think a very profound, but also the, um, um, a very simple answer is, is uh, be a good person. And I think, uh, you know, to make a good career um, is you know, you start being a good person first. If you if you don't know what that is, then I think it's very hard to establish anything for yourself. And what I mean, a good person would be, um, you know, to give a to be fair, um, to treat people the way you want to be treated, and um, also willing to learn and know, you know, what it takes to to make things happen. Um, it sounds a bit heavy from an employer. And, you know, it almost sounds, you know, that expect, you know, everyone to, uh, to give 120%, you know, you know, to, to do something. Um, but truth to be told, sometimes that's what it really takes. So uh, I, I think to um, the soft skills would be really uh, to develop, you know, I, I mentioned about passion, but also um, to um, to to be mentally prepared that I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to try, and and also I don't know if that's a soft skill, but I think also requires a little bit of effort to step out from your comfort zone a little bit every day, you know, a conversation, a task um, that you're not quite sure, but you you have to venture out a bit, and and I think the advancement uh, comes from these things. If you try it, um, then you you get a lot of satisfaction out of it, and you, you get better every day. And um, but definitely not being complacent or status quo. Um, I think um, I, I think I, I think those are the things we we need to avoid. You know, um, as a person or you know, as someone who try to start a career. And uh, yeah, that would that would that that would be my answer. Do you have an HR department or do you generally do the most of the hiring for the company? Uh, we have uh, a dedicated uh, manager that do all the hiring and um, it goes through um, uh, basically our, um, our production planning manager when it comes to you know, our production team members would go through uh, the resumes and we have um, usually uh, at least two rounds of interview. And also, um, you know, um, clear explanation of what the task required. You know, a, a, a plan tour. Um, we want to be very transparent, um, but we um, we devote a lot to, you know, in terms of training and orientation. Um, I think that's very important, and uh, but we can certainly do even more. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I, that's that's where we are right now. That's key. I think the the, the training um, piece. It's one one of the pieces of feedback we hear the most. Um, people, 
you know, the, the joint companies, they want to know that they can advance in their career and they can receive training and, and um, you know, that someone cares about their, their five-year goals. And I think now I hear from more and more HR leaders from different companies that that's so significant because it is so challenging to hire people and keep them, um, certainly right now in this climate. So, um, yeah, Amelia, what, what is your, your take on, on soft skills? Um, for roles that, you know, for, for the, similar to, to, to the role you're in? Yeah, for research and development, I think communication is a really big skill mm -hmm. because I can, someone can have the best idea in the whole world for a new product. But if I can't communicate that to the team, well, it's not going to happen, can't happen. So communication, I think, is very important. Um, further, I think organization is key. Um, because there are so many elements that go into each product as far as ingredients, as far as how we process it, labeling, packaging, everything. You have to be so organized with how you have all that information. Otherwise, it's going to be jumbled up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last one, which is my favorite, is I think it's uh, it would be important to be creative. I love how you break it down because I think people do get, new grads especially, do get confused. You know, we throw around these buzzwords like soft skills and technical skills and, and they're like, okay, what does that actually mean? How does it, yeah. how does it apply? You know, again, because you're not in a row, I think it's very easy for us to sit back and see how, how these skills apply to our positions. But when you're just starting out, it can be overwhelming. I, 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 so that, again, this is why we are doing these sessions so that um, people that are interested in these different roles can, can learn and, and put their best foot forward um, in an interview situation. Um, we are reaching close to, to the time. So I guess my, um, I, oh, I have a couple more questions. I, I think the, the first would be to Francis. What are some of the challenges facing the company right now? And what is the, what is the plan, like your strategic plan, the next three to five years for you? So what can we look forward to? Well, definitely um, continue innovation. It's, you know, is ongoing for us and uh, we're, um, the opportunity and the challenge um, that I believe we're facing, it's, you know, continue to adapt, changing consumer trends and needs. And, um, and, I, um, and our, all the new product launches that uh, we've made this year is our first attempt, uh, beginning of, you know, a change that we want to reposition you also as a plant-based probiotic um, for, uh, as a functional food for wellness. Uh, versus um, just a plant-based or yogurt alternative, um, because I think the um, there are more and more brands offering plant-based yogurts, but not um, not any brand or very few brands are really focusing on probiotics. And I and I think for us is always to uh, to bring value and to differentiate from uh, other brands, which what we have started. Um, continued challenge will be obviously is the economy and you know we have been living and dealing with uh, more or less you know with COVID for the past few years and I think uh, that definitely has challenges when it comes to um, consumer uh, behavior or their buying habits uh, it, it, it has disrupted and I think there are certain changes are probably uh, would uh, would not uh, would stay, and um, so we ha we have to adapt, and um, um, and also obviously more brands and and uh, more competition, and, um, and but those things are uh, quite usual, and uh, but I would say right now, um, I would say the 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 challenge is more macro. I think is the economy. Is really the inflation. It's really about how we can make sure we can keep providing products that are meaningful and uh, accessible by everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and you mentioned the marketing team and sales. Um, and, and Amelia, you mentioned you have an impact there. You, you work so closely because I think as a consumer, um, the communication piece is, is huge. Everyone is concerned about their health. And you mentioned probiotics, gut health as well. But it's, it's, trusting the brand too and, and the communication is so important um 
to be able to do that. So um, we will be there rooting, you know, rooting you along, happy to support the, the company. Um, you know, again, I think these types of sessions allow people to get to know who's behind the door, who's behind the products and who's making the food that, you know, consumers are eating. So, um, Amelia, you've done this for a while, but it's so nice to see you in this position making such an impact. And um, I guess I'll, um, I'll ask you, what would the top three pieces of advice be um, for job seekers or new grads um, that you could offer? And, and Francis, please feel free to, to, to comment if you have any comments, but just to end on sort of a, a, a positive, what would be the best advice you would give um, to graduates? And again, you've, you've done a lot of this through Food Grads and, and Taste Your Future, but I think your advice is so relevant. So uh, yeah. <laughs> um, my advice to graduates would be, um, put yourself out there and don't be shy get out of your comfort zone when you're looking for jobs um, and also apply for things that you don't know if you'll like. The whole exciting part about graduating is you get to try so many things. Um, like in real life now, you've been reading about it for so long, but now it's time to try it. So enjoy that. It'll be challenging and probably frustrating at times, but every, I probably everything that you do, you'll learn something from. Um, my other advice would be, um, you know, it's hard sometimes to compare yourself to other people in your class. Like, oh, this person got this job right away or this person, you know, has a full-time job wherever. It will happen for you and it will be okay as long as you're putting in the work, um, you know, and doing your best, it, something will come for you and everything always happens for a reason. Mm. That's amazing advice and it, it's so true I, I recruit so I work with food grads and, and at the people at the beginning of their career but I also recruit for the industry and work with people more senior in their career and you still have people you know my age and up saying I don't know what I want to do when I grow up so yeah I think you know <laughs> there's that that misconception that everyone's always got it figured out and that they know for sure you know within the first year or two what they want to do and then if it, if it derails yeah. they get upset or maybe have a hard on themselves but wow I mean it's a it's a marathon and it, and it and it's exciting to move and you could end up in a role that you never dreamed you'd be in but you let that's what the part that's what the plan was for you so uh, yeah no I, I love that advice any parting words Francis or uh... no, I think Emily put it very eloquently, and um, and is really, um, you know, we live in um, a world um, which I constantly feel sometimes a bit outdated, um, but is very instantaneous, and it, you know, um, I I think it's very important, you know, um, not to set yourself uh, with success. And uh, rather than wanting to be the top, uh, it's whether you are improving from yesterday. And I think it's that daily progression that we all need um, to continue life or build a career um, so that, you know, you, um, you, you can be confident um, even though you're not perfect and uh, you're hungry and you, you, want to, you, you want to try and you want to build something. And I think developing a curiosity and positive mindset, it, you know, are very, very important because um, I think that's, that's, those are essential qualities to have um, when you're joining a company, big or small. And, uh, and for employers, usually we see it right away, whether that person has, um, have that willingness and attitude to try it. Um, um, yeah. So uh, we really appreciate what what you do and what your program offer, and I think we really need that in the industry. So I thank you for that. Um, yeah, and I this has been fun. Thank you again. Thank you so much for participating. We couldn't do these sessions. Um, we couldn't do a lot of the program without employers supporting um, our initiative. So um, thank you. Um, thank you, Yoso. Sorry, Eric couldn't join us, but uh, hopefully the issues that you were experiencing have been resolved. <laughs>
And um, yeah, I, uh, I really appreciate your time and have a great rest of the day. If anyone's watching, has any questions um, for anybody here today, please feel free to email me. Uh, my email has been on the screen throughout. So, um, you know, I'm sure that Amelia and Francis wouldn't mind if I fired off a question here and there, if, if you have one. <laughs> awesome. And uh, again, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Have a great rest of the day. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.